across the console and say, good morning, how are you? I'm doing good. It's Doc Talk, and introduce yourself again. Dr. Seward. Dr. Seward. Good morning, and, hospital. Uh, OBGYN, yes? Yes, I am. Very good. And yeah. uh, you even wore the uh, outfit. I, I did. I've got my pajamas on. This is a, <laughs> a bad laundry weekend. <laughs> I understand. I understand. you got work to do, man. <laughs> now, that, that said, I've got a really interesting topic. Um, we we're going to talk about about teen pregnancy and uh, and teen behavior in the age of the internet, and this is kind of something that we're seeing come uh, to life at the moment. And there are some very interesting things to talk about. Um, I'm going to quote a couple of, of sources. I don't usually do this, um, but one is uh, the National Institute of Health, and the other is um, the the TED Radio Hour. If you ever listen to the TED Talks on NPR. If you, if you don't, if anybody out there in the audience doesn't, do sometime. Um, there was a particular uh, TED Radio talk on risk behavior and how uh, the internet is, is interfacing. And actually there are a couple of talks um, that deal with this that are very interesting. But we'll start in with the NIH. There, there are some statistics out there that suggest and um, I, would, I would even argue this is true based on my practical experience, that teen pregnancy rates are down, that, that there are fewer STDs in the 13 to 18 year old range, that the average age of, of teenagers getting uh, sexually intimate is later than it was 10, 15, 20, 30 years ago. Um, all of those are statistics that have been claimed by both ends of the political spectrum as successes. Um, you will hear on one end that this is a success of access to birth control. Um, on the other end, you will hear this is a success of abstinence teachings. Um, and there is a little bit of evidence that basically both of those might be a little bit true. But that's not the main reason why. Uh, and most evidence points to the fact that um, we have less human interactions <laughs> with, our, with our teenagers now than we used to. In fact, almost all of those problems that we would, would look at that were formerly teenage problems are now young adult problems, and they've created some new worse problems. Um, so it's kind of a double-edged sword, and this is kind of an interesting phenomenon, and this is where we get into the TED stuff. Um, well, I was just sitting here thinking the yeah. last TED talk I saw was a guy standing there saying the average teenage boy spends 20 hours a week alone, online, playing violent video games or watching porn. Well, if he's doing that, he's not out doing what you do when you get pregnant. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> well, this is a, a double-edged sword there. It is a, it is a true statement, and, um, and, and, and we'll get to that hopefully as sort of a, a wrap-up to all of this. But, but um, you, you hit a point. Um, first of all, if you were to look at the 13 to... 18 year uh, age group range. These guys are way more technology uh, savvy. They're way more technology oriented than than people that are say over 40. Um, you know, it's, that's a, a straight up truth. If your computer breaks, who do you go to? You go to the teenager in the house. Um, you know, there are there are simply there is a ton of information accessible that we simply as as the as the parent generation cannot block there is no way that the that the teenagers of today aren't being exposed to all kinds of things um, but interestingly um, and I, I will use this as an example it's hard to have a conversation with a 13 or 14 year old that doesn't go something like this and for the radio audience I'm holding my cell phone directly right. in front of my face four inches away um, and any conversation that's had does not require eye contact. In fact, if you require eye contact, you will probably get an eye roll because <laughs> <laughs> you made them move their, their screen away from their face. Um, bottom line is uh, the mode of communication has changed. Um, now, that said, um, there, there was an interesting, one of the TED Talk uh, topics had something to do with um, babies in a cliff. And they did a, a, an experiment where they allowed babies to go up to a basically a drop-off. Um, I assume they did this in some safe manner. I have no idea how it was done. But they let some babies go up to the drop-off and either tumble over or figure it out, basically. Um, and then they, they held other babies back. And 
it, interestingly, the babies that were allowed to go up and explore the cliff learned that a cliff is dangerous, and their behaviors changed. And, and yeah, sure, a few of them probably tumbled over. Um, the ones that were held back never learned that lesson, and so later on, they were still tumbling over the cliff. And the, the, the idea there, I think, can be applied a little bit to what we're seeing with teen problems and young adult problems now. So, and again, this, this is a, a really interesting topic that, like so many of our topics, could require follow-up and follow-up and follow-up discussions. But one of the things that's sort of interesting about the, about the, the teen pregnancy rate phenomenon is that we are also seeing less direct interactions with, with teenagers. And some of them have to do with that, the boy sitting at home on the computer playing violent video games and watching porn. Um, but even just simple interactions, I think you and I can look at our Facebook leads and we can see all kinds of things that are posted by people that we don't know that well that are railing about this or that, that they would never say to us in person. Oh yeah, you know, and and the the truth of the matter is, there's an art form to interpersonal communications that gets lost through that screen, um, and and it takes away certain filters, and uh, and it changes how how we communicate with one another, and we are seeing uh, there's there's some evidence that our younger generation now aren't as good at face to face, eye to eye communication. Um, and and it's taking a step beyond that, well, I think most of, of us in health and probably most uh, of most people that are parents of teenagers now are a little bit happy that we're having fewer teen pregnancies and fewer teen STDs. Um, on the con contrary to that, we're seeing an, a rise in young adult STDs. So once you do kind of cross that, that Rubicon, it, once you do finally approach that cliff, um, you're more likely to fall over. And the, the second part of that is that teenage suicide rates are up and there are a whole, there's a whole new slew of, of mental health issues that are, that are coming, um, depression and whatnot that you don't, didn't see in teenagers of, 20 or 30 years ago. So this is definitely what, what my grandmother would call a mollycoddled um, generation where I, I like to think of it as the, the four-point uh, harnessed uh, uh, child seat generation where as, as, as a generation, my generation uh, tended to hold them back from the cliff. That was sort of the parenting style. And now you've got kids that have access to a, an incredible diverse amount of information that they alone are able to access. I can't guide them through that as the parent. And ultimately, it has a, a sort of a strange, interesting, isolating effect on how people communicate. And this is more affecting teenagers and young adults than any, any place else across the spectrum. Um, you will also see, and this is, you know, I think if you were a conservative saying, well, it's good that we have less STD rates, that, the, that there's more abstinence and that, that teen pregnancy rates are down, which, again, as a healthcare provider, I agree with, you also have to worry a little bit about the fact that fewer kids are choosing to go on and get married at all, that people are making some strange decisions, and when they do become sexually active, sometimes they are expecting really aberrant behavior because that's what you see on the internet. Right. There, there's no longer, you know, simple interactions. It's, it's oftentimes some of the, the strange fetish stuff that, that kind of pops up first. And it's and, utterly abhorrent, and it's all directed and, and, and in it's, a hateful way towards women. We're, also talking about a strange way that they're learning about the relationship between the sexes now. It, it is. Because when I was a kid, you turned on the TV, and you saw Andy Griffith, or you saw a musical. Yeah. So when you fell in love, you burst out in the song, and you danced, <laughs> you know. Now the stuff they're seeing on the internet is like it's out of a combat zone, some of it. It's I think I would have liked horrific. to have watched your first couple of dates. <laughs> <laughs> no, you wouldn't. 
I not, think, we're not talking comedy here. I, I think in, in my in my <laughs> personal experience, it was there was comedy involved because I think it was like purely awkward. Yeah. <laughs> you had to work through the whole awkward. Back then, you could be awkward, yeah. and the entire world didn't know about it that night when they posted yeah. it up on Facebook. So. There, there's also a kind of an interesting phenomenon too, and I would call it the addiction to technology, or maybe it's the addiction to the stream of information. Um, it, one of one of my favorite parts of reading about the Civil War was that um, at one point in time, England was thinking about getting involved with the, the uh, Confederacy, and the the Union, um, Abraham Lincoln and, and his crew were were trying to manage that in such a way that it didn't affect their efforts and um, but they were dealing with communication that had a three-week lag because a, a letter sent had to go on a steamer and get you know mailed across the sea and there was a lot going on in those three weeks and could you imagine a three-week lag and when I was a kid it was the five o'clock news you got half an hour of news you know three times a day or something like that and uh, and that that might have been just before my generation. I was sort of the the beginning of the CNN generation. But but the at at that point in time, your information came in you know daily spurts basically, and it was very much put in synopsis form because you couldn't you didn't need to fill up twenty four right seven news cycles. Um, there were, breaking news was really breaking news. Yeah, um, you saw something happen live. It was yeah. a big deal. And so so. You know, nowadays I think that, and it, it's multi multifaceted, but certainly with the internet, when something happens, when the the proverbial you know butterfly flaps its wings in China, we know about it moments later. Mm -hmm. it, it's a viral sensation, and so it's it's kind of it's just sort of an interesting. And I'm not passing judgment. I think it is what it is at this point. And as a healthcare provider, I'm going to have to respond to the changes. Uh, from my own perspective, I'm seeing more advanced maternal age and less teen pregnancy. That that probably, in some form, is a good thing. Um, you know, it's not that teenagers make bad babies necessarily, but it's that it's the you're way better our, off if you're old enough. To the way our society is set up, yeah. our teenagers aren't usually aren't usually coping well with with motherhood. Yeah. and um, or or father, even worse with fatherhood, yeah. <laughs> and and. Um, and it changes, it skews the sorts of problems that I have to deal with as a as a, a guy that delivers babies. Now, I think across the spectrum, there's there's a whole different um, psychology. And as a parent of teenagers, this becomes um, even trickier because you know these guys are going to grow up in you know in an age where their their main communications might be through cell phones, and they may be exposed to things that that. You know, we may need to figure out how is the best way to keep keep kids healthy and mentally, you know, sane, and ultimately um, communicating the best they possibly can with us and each other. Um, how do I, we maintain enough empathy that we want to? <laughs> well, one you know, of the things you learn when you grow up around other human beings, uh, other than not to be a complete sociopath, is a sense of empathy. I mean. Empathy is what drives us, and yet when you're working from job to job as opposed to pay, and people don't think that through, but when you're working paycheck to paycheck, at least you know you got a job next week. When you're working job to job, you don't know that. And then you're looking at that stub and you're saying, how much am I paying for somebody else's Medicare or Medicaid, and I don't even know if I'm going to have work next month? That's a completely different angle to look at the question from. And it seems to me, and I'm taking up your time here, but I just completed a semester class on this. Uh, it seems to me like we're beating empathy out of our kids right now with all this stuff. I I, I suspect, and, and it kind of it kind of cuts both ways. When I was um, when I was a teenager, and not not to pit you know this generation versus that, but the way that you addressed say bullying or your place in society or how you dealt with um, your own sort of internal angst or anxiety was directly. And and I again I don't know if that's better. Or I just know that I just know that that's how I had to do it. Yeah, um, me too. And and so if you wanted to, you know, ask the cheerleader to dance, you, you had to, you know, muster up the courage to do it. If you wanted to, you know, if you couldn't, if you you had to find a way to to insert yourself into the social fabric, whatever that might be. 
Um, and, and there were always people that were probably on the, the downside of that or that, that were bullied. Now, you know, it's, it's much more impersonal. The problem, I think, with what we see nowadays is that with the internet and with um, cell phones and texting and mass texting and sort of that form of communication, it's easier to put out sort of, sort of more ridiculous ideas or, or more fringe ideas to a lot of people without having to deal with the specific consequences of that. So yeah, empathy fits into that, as does just sort of the ability to speak. Um, you know, the ability to communicate, eye contact, body language, a lot of these things. Now, I think that most people figure it out. And, and sort of, I, I don't think that, in some ways, this generation is more amazing than any generation before it. Um, they definitely have an entire new world of technology that, that will define the future, whether we like it or not. Yeah. You now it's here to stay. I'm, I'm going to have to deal with that doggone medi uh, medical um, record system, <laughs> no, matter, no matter if I want to or not. Uh, that EMR is there to stay. But um, it, it's, it's something that um, has consequences. And I think as a healthcare provider, and, and as a, a dad, and as some, a concerned citizen, and somebody who deals with a lot of people that have that four inch cell phone. Right. Um, and somebody, and particularly in my field, that deals with um, some of these these sort of sexuality consequences, um, pregnancy, STDs, uh, and some of the psychological issues that go along um, both both ways, um, it it will at some point have uh, some direct health uh, impact, and I think we're already starting to see that. Um, I think you know if you just look around at bullying or how we behave, how we how we sort of guard our, our children against the sort of the ill effects of the world. I remember my, my grandmother as a, a small child, I wanted to go play in the park and she told me to watch out for the gypsies. And I'm sure that there hadn't been gypsies in that park ever. But if there had been, it was, you know, at least a hundred years before. I mean, you might as well, you know, watch out for, you know, the, the, the wild. Gypsies know. always get picked on when they're not. I don't even know. When don't they're not a presence. My I, mom used to say, I'm going to tear your lips off and sell them to the gypsies. And I thought, what gypsies? We don't have gypsies. This is, this is, yeah, I've never seen a band of gypsies come walking through the yeah. steel kids or whatever. But, but that, was, that was sort of the, you know, the advice was just sort of, you know, plant the fear and, and then go behave yourself. And and, and I, I have to say, you know, as a, a teenager, I'm I'm kind of glad that my kids aren't doing some of the things that, that I probably did. Well, yeah. And uh, at the same time, though, I think one of the things this makes me think through as a parent is how do you expose your kids to the right lessons? How do you allow them to explore that cliff um, and, and maybe not fall over? Um, and how do we, as, as sort of an older generation, grapple with sort of these, these things that the newer generation, the younger generation, are, are going to be grappling with that we really don't have much control or say over? And I, I think that technology is sort of big into that. Um, cell phones are just such a, a different thing than, than we ever had before, and access to information is so instantaneous and so complete that it, it's an interesting set of problems. And I'm not posing adequate solutions. I'd love to have people call in and give some. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you found the answer to this, let me know. I'll be your agent. Uh, they, you know, a lot of people say, well, just don't buy the kid the cell phone or just don't let the kid mess around with this stuff. Well, all you've done is drive him into the basement of his best friend's house. Well, and, and, you know? and, 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 and it's kind of like ignorance uh, it doesn't necessarily solve the problem either. I think we have to find a way to navigate through these things. I have a cell phone. I use it all the time. Um, and I'm, I'm used to having that instant access. The difference, I think, is that I relish turning the doggone thing off and putting it away. Um, and I would, in an instant, trade it in for you know eye contact and, and a good conversation over a cup of coffee. Um, on just about any topic that doesn't have anything to do with with anything that's on my cell phone. <laughs> yeah, well, we've, we've, we've reversed that now. We've raised these kids to expect that if they don't have it, it's like, you know, their biggest complaint is mom texting them every five minutes. Uh, otherwise, they want to be left alone, and they yeah. expect that for some reason. 
Well, I, I, I think these are all problems, and I, I think that's one way to insert yourself into the technology world as a parent is to, is to, to text the kids regardless. And, and I've heard had a number of people now tell me that some of the best parenting advice is just to be persistent. That's maybe true with teenagers in general. But that said, I, I, I do think that these are some interesting trends, and um, the, the decreased... Um, rates of, of pregnancy and STDs are, are probably good trends. And I don't, I don't think they're necessarily coming about through due to simple altruistic or, or um, you know, any policy things that we've come up with other than I, I, I do believe that the psychology of the current generation is affected a lot by some of these technology issues and that's why. Um, that said though, um, how do we manage it going forward? How do we continue those trends but, but maybe fight off some of the consequence. Uh, I, I think these are going to be the challenge of the next, you know, the next several of these talks, maybe. <laughs> and, um, and ultimately, you know, ha how we go forward in medicine in the future. Yeah. Anytime new technology comes along, you have vast changes that are hard to deal with. So if somebody picks a black rock up in England, well, we cut down all the lumber, let's try burning coal. And then the next thing you know, you're figuring out how to feed 10,000 more people in London because now you can get an apartment that's got heat in it and blah, 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 you know, stuck on the cut. A whole bunch of stuff comes along every time we have technology. Now, unfortunately, we're at a point now where technology can absorb our intellect and with AI, they're talking, I mean, some of the stuff they're talking about is actually kind of scary. Well, it's, it's, it's here. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, little kids now have dolls that talk to them and correct their language and then when the, the, the thing wears out, you go online to the cemetery and bury <laughs> maybe, maybe 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 what we do is with the uh, the doll that talks to you or the um, or, or reports your behavior to the internet or, or whatever the scary AI thing might be, maybe we need to somehow build into that, you know, a reminder that it's okay to go up to the edge of that cliff and learn about it but not fall over. Yeah. I, 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 I hearken back, and this I think is actually more of a positive thing than a negative one. Um, I went on a road trip with a buddy of mine and my son a few years ago. We, we were going to Oregon up the coast of California and we got into an argument over who sang a song. I don't even know what song it was. Doesn't matter. But um, we got into this argument. And this would have been one of those arguments that would have gone on for a day and a half until we could have figured it would have gone to it. But we, we solved this argument in like a second, you know, and it was almost like, well, crap, what are we going to argue about now? Yeah. And, and, and it just went from thing to thing to thing. And I think when ultimately we got done, we had covered a lot more topics than we would have been in the old days. We probably had more relevant information. Uh, we had it instantaneously. Um, I, on almost a daily on almost a daily basis, will be intrigued by something, something somebody says, something I see, something I just wonder about. Oh, my gosh, what are the lyrics of that song? And we get, and, and I just look them up, you yeah. know, I Wikipedia it. And uh, that's, it's just a, a way to get a lot of information quickly. And I think that that's not entirely a bad thing if you know how to balance it into your life. And that's, that's where I think the trick is. If, you know, I think right now we've got um, a generation that probably doesn't balance it one way, and we've got another generation that probably doesn't balance it the other way, and somewhere in the middle is probably the right the right solution and, and taking into account the psychology that goes along with that both ways. Okay, very good. Uh, Doc Talk coming your way once a month. Do we have anything else we need to go over? Or? I, you know, this is a big topic and we could probably talk about it all day and all night and, and we probably wouldn't solve it just yet. Um, but I think it's interesting and it's something that, um, that that's relevant at the moment and maybe, maybe it'll spurn some follow-up discussion. That would be good. Thank you, kind sir, for your time.